Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at interphase, mitosis and cytokinesis, interphase in G1, interphase in S and G2, exiting the cell cycle, and then we'll finish with a summary. So first of all, let's talk about the different stages of the cell cycle. You may have heard about the cell cycle before, and it's essentially referring to the sequence of events that happens to a cell during its life. So when you look down at any cells or a tissue, which is a group of cells down a microscope, what you'll see is that some cells look like they're about to start dividing, some cells look like they're almost finished dividing, and some cells look like they're not dividing at all. So this is because different cells are at different points in their cell cycle. For example, if we look at this sort of illustrated diagram here, these two cells are not dividing, and this means that they're carrying out other processes, they're living their life, they're doing their function, they're doing various things, but they're not dividing into other cells. And remember, the division of cells means that one cell divides into two identical daughter cells. However, if we look at this one, we can see that this is almost two cells, but it's not quite finished dividing into the two yet. So this is during division. And as you look at different tissues through the body, some will be dividing and some will not be dividing, and the proportions might vary depending on what tissue you're looking at. And actually, in a multicellular tissue, for example, those found in organisms like ourselves, a lot of cells aren't dividing because they don't have the ability to divide anymore. In fact, a lot of our organs and a lot of tissues in the body have grown during development and during puberty, but actually once they've reached the adult stage, a lot of the cells lose their ability to divide. So for example, these two have lost their dividing potential. And even if cells are able to divide, they can go a long period of time without dividing at all. So the cells might retain the ability to divide, but because of their functions in the tissue, they may go through a long time where they're not dividing at all. They may only be divided, for example, when they're triggered to. So the phase in which they're not dividing and that they're doing other things is known as the interphase because inter refers to in between, so they're in between divisions. Once interphase is finished and they begin dividing, the chromosomes start to appear and become visible and then they move to opposite parts of the cell and then the cell will start forming two separate nuclei. This is called mitosis. After mitosis, the cell splits into two, making the two new cells, and this is called cytokinesis. So these three phases get repeated again and again around a cycle. And obviously once you've formed two new cells, each of those cells will enter their own interphase and then go through mitosis again. And as you can see, it would go round and round and round. So first of all, if we label this as the cell cycle, we have this larger arrow which takes up most of the cell's life, and this is the interphase, i.e. the phases in which it's not dividing but it's in between divisions and it's just carrying out its own specific functions. And then if a cell decides to start dividing, it replicates its DNA and begins moving that DNA across to the opposite end of the cell. So this is in the M phase or the mitosis stage. And then once the cell is ready to split into two, it does the physical splitting into two identical cells. And this phase is the cytokinesis. And then obviously after this, you would have two new cells. One cell goes into its own interphase and another cell goes into its interphase as well and would have its own separate cell cycle. So even though we've mentioned that the cell cycle has these three phases, interphase itself actually has multiple phases within it as well. It's a very multi-step process. So in interphase, the cells may look like they're not doing anything under the microscope, i.e. dormant. But actually this isn't true. It's a very important stage in the cell cycle and it's not just the case that they're at rest. So remember interphase is the longest phase in the cell cycle here, represented by the red arrow. The interphase is actually split up into three stages within itself, G1, S and G2. So if we were to label those on the diagram, the red arrow is obviously interphase, this is G1, and this is followed by the S stage, and then the S stage is followed by the G2 stage. So there's three stages within the interphase, and again, this is not just the cell being at rest doing nothing, this is a very important stage of the cycle. So we'll talk about G1 in this particular slide. G1 is also known as the growth phase, hence the G, and in this phase, the cell simply prepares or makes preparations to ensure that the cell is ready to go into the S phase. So the preparations include becoming ready to grow into two separate cells. So it begins duplicating all of its organelles. So all of those organelles, for example, mitochondria, or things like the Golgi apparatus, what it does is it begins to duplicate these, so it multiplies them by two, so that when it's ready to make two new cells, each cell can take a set of its own organelles. 
Not only does it do this, but it grows in size as well. So the actual cell grows overall, so it gets more cytoplasm, and the membrane grows in size, and overall it just becomes bigger and bigger over time. And this can take various different amounts of time. And finally, not only does it do this, but it makes proteins that are needed in the S phase. And we'll talk about the S phase in just a moment. So now we'll talk about the S and G2 phases. So now the cell has grown in size, duplicated its organelles, and it's created the proteins ready for S phase. So it's now ready to go into S phase. Once it's entered S phase, there is no going back. It's kind of a point of return. If the cell is in G1, it's allowed to stay in G1 and not enter the S phase. And it can just go back to being dormant if it wants to. But once it's entered the S phase, which is this arrow here, it has to then progress through the cycle, go forward into mitosis, cytokinesis, and then divide into two cells. We also call S phase the synthesis phase, hence the S, because this is the part where the DNA doubles in size, or DNA synthesis happens. So what happens is every strand of DNA, if we represent that as a double-stranded molecule like this, it gets replicated, and then the genome basically doubles itself. So this is still during interphase, remember, when the cell is still carrying out its function, but now in S phase, the DNA is being doubled so that each of the new cells will have its own set of DNA. So remember in DNA replication, the strands will separate, and then each strand will have a template strand put upon it, and that will elongate all the way down to the end of DNA, and then eventually you end up with two new strands of the DNA. When you're replicating DNA, the cell always replicates the most important sequences of DNA first, and the bits of DNA that are only required in some cell types, so those that are less important overall, they get replicated last. So you get replication forks happening at more important genes, and then eventually all of it gets joined up towards the end. At the end of S phase, all of the DNA has been doubled in number, and the chromosomes will be replicated. So remember, DNA exists in a set of 23 chromosomes, and these are usually in pairs as well. So there'll be one set from the mum and one set from the dad. And then as we go through S phase, each one would have been copied. So then what that means is during the mitosis stage, eventually they'll go to opposite ends of the cell. And then as the cell splits into two, each one will have its own set of DNA. So cells that don't end up dividing will at one point leave the cell cycle because they're not going through interphase to get ready to divide again. And this can happen in several tissues. One of the most known ones is nerve tissue. So your brain develops through much of your younger life, but some cells, once they've been formed, they exit the cell cycle and can no longer divide. And this is why having strokes and certain damages to the brain can be dangerous because the cells can't replace themselves. So this exit of the cell cycle occurs early in the G1 phase. The cells can either continue into the cell cycle, go into S phase at that no point return part, or they can enter the G0 phase, which is where they exit the cycle. So just to recap, remember this is the interphase, and once cells have gone through this stage, which is the cytokinesis, we've now got two cells. So you'll have one cell go off into its own cycle, and now you have this other cell entering interphase, and instead of entering the rest of G1 phase, what it can do is it can leave the cycle and not progress to the S phase, and this would be the G0 phase. The cells in the G0 phase can do different things. They're obviously not going to divide, but they could differentiate. Differentiate meaning that they specialize into a particular type of cell, like a muscle cell, and therefore they keep this fact that they're not going to divide. They could also die as well. So in embryo development, a lot of cells between, for example, your fingers that were there or between your toes end up dying to create gaps that are important for your limbs. Or they can enter senescence or aging, where they just stop dividing overall and just become sort of at rest. Finally, we need to talk about how DNA changes through the cell cycle. So we already talked about how during the interphase S stage after G1, the DNA is multiplied by two and it's replicated. This is because each cell needs its own set of DNA. But actually we can see the changes in the mass of DNA in the cell over time to see what happens during the cell cycle. So obviously the mass of the cell grows continually during the cell cycle as it makes more DNA, more proteins and more organelles. So if we look at a graph of the cell's mass here, so if we have time on the bottom and then mass of the cell here, what we see is that the mass of the cell continues to rise over its cycles. So looking at the cell cycle here, in stage one, we'll call it interphase. So we'll call this stage one as well. So in stage one, remember we've got G1 and S, and obviously at this point we've got increased size of the cell, we've got increased organelles, 
and we've got increased amounts of DNA during the S phase as well. And then what we have is during mitosis, which is stage two, we have the cells now growing in cytoplasm. We have two cells starting to form and we have a double set of DNA. So the size is still going up here. And then here it drops. So the mass of the cell goes basically down to about half. And the reason why this is happening is because we reach that final stage in the cell cycle, which is cytokinesis. So in cytokinesis, the cell splits into two and then each cell goes back to the start of the graph again. So this is one complete cycle. So that's how the mass of the cell changes through the cycle. And then going back down, we've got now at the start of a new cell cycle. When we look at DNA, DNA is only synthesized in the S part of the interphase stage. So the mass of the DNA increases for a short part of the cell cycle, as opposed to the mass of the cell. So let's have here a mass of DNA this time, with time. So during the G1 phase, in the first part of interphase, the DNA isn't increasing its mass at all. It's becoming more visible, but it's not actually increasing in its mass. And the reason it becomes visible is because the chromosomes start to condense together. What we then have is the beginning of S phase, and in S phase, we see that the DNA replicates and becomes a copy of two. So this distance here in mass will be about the same as this one. So we now have twice as much DNA as we originally had. And then across here, again, no more change, but this is in G2. So the DNA is already replicated and the cell is just preparing to divide. And then of course, at this point here, the cell divides. The mass goes back down to half because each cell now has half of the DNA material. So during the cytokinesis stage, the cell obviously splits into two separate cells. Half the DNA goes into one cell and half the DNA goes into the other cell. And now we have two cells which are identical to the original cell, each with their own complete set of DNA. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.